So today is my six year vegan anniversary. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so if anyone's talked to me before, I went vegetarian when I was a kid. At nine years old, my, one of my older sisters showed me a video of an animal being killed. Um, it was a pig, I think it was actually a PETA video, but she showed me the video and told me that that's what meat was. And at nine years old, I had no idea what I was eating. I loved animals, like my family always had a bunch of different animals in our backyard. We had miniature ponies and chickens and ducks and geese and literally every type of animal. <laughs> and. I would have never hurt any of those animals, so when I realized that I was actually eating the dead body of an animal, I remember feeling shocked and horrified, and I stopped eating meat. That's all it really took for me, is just kind of realizing what I was eating. So I was vegetarian for seven years, and I never really even thought about veganism because I grew up in a small town and I didn't even know anyone that was vegan. but. At one point, I met this vegan family, and I remember talking to the dad in that family, and I think he was telling me about the the health benefits of being vegan and like not consuming dairy. And I remember telling him, I was like, oh, I would love to go vegan, but I could not give up cheese. And now I look back on that and I cringe a little bit because I've had so many people tell me that before and it's just a ridiculous excuse but I think the reason why I said that was because I didn't actually know that anything bad was happening to the animals and I kind of wish that guy would have told me about the animal suffering you know about the baby cows being shot in the head in the dairy industry or the male chicks being ground alive in the egg industry because that's what would have done it for me but I went a little longer just being vegetarian and then I just one day I just kind of had this gut feeling I was like I think I need to go vegan and I think it's just because every once in a while I'd have someone ask me like oh do you just drink milk because cows just make it and we have to milk them and I was like yeah sure but I didn't actually know anything about the process and I think that's what kind of got me there is once I really started thinking about it I realized that I didn't know what was going into these products that I was eating and it was mainly cheese I ate cheese all the time as a vegetarian that's kind of what I used instead of meat I would have grilled cheese if I went to a restaurant or mac and cheese or I would just eat it plain <laughs> which is really gross to think about now but yeah, that's just kind of what I did, but then when I realized I didn't know anything about the process, I had that gut feeling. I was like, I think I need to go vegan. And then I did, and then later I learned about all those different processes, and later I learned about the dairy industry and all the horrible stuff that happens in that industry. I think I watched a video like Dairy is Scary, and I remember feeling absolutely shocked or learning about the male chicks in the egg industry and them being ground alive because they're not going to grow up to lay eggs. That was horrifying for me because for seven years I was consuming those products and thinking that I wasn't harming animals. But at the end of the day, veganism hasn't really been about me. It's not about me. It's about the animals. You know, and the hardest part about being vegan isn't what I eat. You know, when I made that lifestyle change, it was, it was a lifestyle change. You know, it wasn't just about food. And it's not hard to eat vegan food. I feel like sometimes people focus on that so much and, you know, I'll eat burritos and oats and berries and rice and veggies and pizza if I feel like it. I'll eat whatever I want. It's just vegan. And that's nothing. But the hardest part is thinking about the animal suffering and seeing people around you not care. You know, I think that's been especially hard for me because 
the moment I realized I was hurting animals, each time I changed. As a little girl, as a nine-year-old, when I realized that I was eating the dead body of an animal, I was like, oh, I don't want to hurt animals. And that was it. And I had a gut feeling I needed to go vegan, and that was it. I just went vegan. And it's really that simple. At the end of the day, veganism is about just not hurting animals. That's it. And I think I've changed a lot throughout these six years of being vegan. I remember when I first went vegan, there were some things that still didn't completely click for me. Like I didn't really think about how wrong it was to have animals in circuses. You know, like wild animals that we have put in captivity. And it's still, like, these things still rubbed me the wrong way. I still always had a feeling that something wasn't right. And I think that I pushed it back a little bit when I initially went vegan. But the longer that I've been vegan, the more that I think I've been able to make those connections. Now it's super clear to me that having elephants is not okay in captivity. Or having a zoo. Or riding horses. You know, a lot of these things, it's just different forms of animal exploitation that some of us don't think about. I used to love riding horses, but now that I look back on that, I realize that the only reason I loved it was because I was only thinking about myself. And that's the main point here. I think if you consider the other individuals involved, if you consider the animals even a tiny bit, veganism doesn't seem hard anymore and a lot of these answers will become very clear. If I consider what that horse is going through when I jump on his back and kick him to make him run around and carry me, that sounds awful. That sounds so terrible, but I loved it because it was fun riding a horse, but that doesn't mean it was fun for the horse. It means that I had a selfish perspective and that's what it comes down to. You know, when you stop being selfish, that's when you make all these connections. That's when you realize that you need to be vegan because then you actually consider the, the victims of your actions. In that scenario, that horse was the victim of my actions. But in a lot of scenarios, it's like the animals that we're actually consuming are our victims. And I don't know, just with my personal journey, food doesn't really matter. Not going to circuses and zoos doesn't really matter. The thing that makes this complicated is people that are resistant to it. People that use stupid excuses to not be vegan. When people tell me that plants feel pain, I know they don't actually believe that. I think it's a defense mechanism. I think people use these excuses because they know they don't have a good excuse. They know that that's not a good excuse but they don't want to change the action, so they'll say whatever they can to make them feel like they don't have to change. So if they try and convince themselves that plants feel pain, and they can actually like convince themselves that they believe that, then that helps them justify their animal abusing actions. And then they feel better about it. You know, but that's the hardest part. I think it's been good and bad. You know, it sucks to see people just push you aside and it sucks when you tell people about actually going to a slaughterhouse and hearing pigs scream as they're being lowered into gas chambers and then have that person just brush you off and just be like, I don't really care. I'm like, I just got back from a slaughterhouse where I had thousands of pigs being lowered into gas chambers where I knew that they were going in there to get their throat slit and you don't care, you can't just eat something else. <laughs> that's crazy to me. I think that being vegan and talking to people about it has showed me a lot about other people because there's a lot of people that I've been really close to that I've started talking to about veganism and they changed and they're vegan now. My little sister is vegan and she was a little resistant at first but once I really talked to her about it and showed her a documentary, like I, sh I think I showed her Earthlings, and you know, that shows exactly what happens to animals. That's very straightforward. And after watching that, she changed. And I think that says a lot about her as a person. I think it says that she's able to admit when her actions are wrong and change them. 
And that is the type of person that I want to be close to. You know, that example was my little sister, but this has also happened with friends and boyfriends and just a bunch of different people in my life. And when people change after I tell them about this, that shows me a lot about them as just a human, even not related to veganism. I think that shows that they're mature and open-minded and willing to accept when something they've been doing is wrong. And that's the type of people that I want to be close to. I don't want to be friends with someone who says, oh, but plants have feelings or bacon though, when I tell them about something horrible that I've witnessed. You know, when I tell them about the terrible things that these animals are going through, or even just talk about these animals being killed unnecessarily. If your first reaction is, oh, but I like the taste of it, I'm sorry, but you're just not someone that I want to be friends with. And that's the thing. This has been the biggest thing that I think I've learned from veganism. It's taught me a lot about my relationships with people and who is truly trying to be a good person. Sometimes people will say, oh, but this is very egotistical. You're acting like you're better than me. But the problem there is those people are trying to put the focus on me and it's not about me. It's about the animals. It's about what the animals are going through. Because if my ego was involved and I really wanted people to like me, then I wouldn't be vegan <laughs> because there's so many people that absolutely hate me and that's always going to happen when you challenge what people are doing. When you go against the social norm and tell people that something that they've been doing for the majority of their life is terrible and wrong, people are not going to like you for saying that. So that's why I think it's really funny when people say that like it's about my ego because it's not. It's about the animals. That's the thing. Vegans don't really have a lot riding on this, but the meat, the egg, and the dairy industry do. They have billions of dollars riding on this, and that's why they try so hard to convince people that we need to eat meat, eggs, and dairy, and they try so hard to get people to not really think about the process most of the time because they want people to continue to consume these products because if not, they will lose potentially billions of dollars. But animal rights activists are just trying to get people to stop hurting animals. We don't really get a lot out of this. And it doesn't really matter because we've seen what's happening to these animals and we're horrified by it. And all we want is to get people to stop causing this animal abuse to happen you know i think that's reward enough for most of us like when i get someone to go vegan i am ecstatic because i know that just by that simple action hundreds of animals potentially thousands of animals have been saved or if i get someone to get active to start actually speaking up for the animals then that's even more amazing because then there's just a ripple effect if that person can get three more people to go vegan, and then maybe those three people can get more people to go vegan, then that's the greatest benefit of all of this, is just knowing that animals have been saved. But it's interesting because over the past six years, I feel like I have become more and more of an activist, and I've experienced so many changes in myself just being vegan for that long. And I think what really sparked the biggest change in me was the first time I came to Perth and I started doing in-person activism and I went to my first pig vigil and I saw these pigs that were terrified and crammed in this truck and about to go into the slaughterhouse and I walked up to the trucks and said goodbye to them before they were taken in to be killed. I think that really sparked a change in me and that's what made activism seem so urgent. We can't even process the amount of animals that are being killed every day. You know, I think every year, if we're including fish in this, 
it's trillions. And with fish, they don't even count the individual fish. They count it by the tons because it's so many fish that they can't count all the individuals. That's insane to me. This is murder. This is unnecessary killing on a massive scale. And most people around us are the perpetrators. Most people are the ones that are paying for it to happen. And if you're buying those products, the blood is on your hands. Even if it's not physically on your hands, you are still responsible. It's like hiring a hitman. If I hire a hitman to kill someone for me, I'm still responsible for that death. And that's what I think people need to come to terms with. They need to realize that they are taking away the lives of the most vulnerable beings on this planet. The beings that we exploit, the fish and the pigs and the chickens and the cows and the ducks and the sheep, all of these individuals are innocent. All of them are vulnerable. And people that are consuming animal products are using their power to exploit and kill other less powerful beings. And that's wrong. At the end of the day, that's wrong. It's not okay to be doing this. I, I just want people to have a heart. <laughs> you don't even need to have a heart. You just have to not go out of your way to hurt animals. All we have to do is just grab something different. Like that's what's so crazy to me is I've, I've been to these slaughterhouses and I've seen these babies going in to be hung upside down and have their throat slit. And it just makes me think all someone has to do is just grab some vegan sausages in the grocery store or just don't even eat meat alternatives. Just eat beans and rice and potatoes and fruits and veggies. And you know, a lot of things are really affordable, really cheap, and they're vegan. And nobody has to die. So if you're interested in being vegan, comment below. Like, feel free to ask me questions. I'm always here to help. If you're an activist or if you're vegan and not an activist, like, just let me know what you think. I'm always interested to hear how long other people have been vegan or about your journeys. But thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys sticking through this whole video and I will talk to you all soon. Uh -huh.